Hi, it's Rob, and today we're going to do a teardown video. I have help, because Piper's over there and Isis is somewhere off camera um, waiting to cause trouble. So we'll see how this goes. So today's teardown is this. It's a high efficiency gas furnace. Uh, I got this from it. Thank you, Piper. I got this from a neighbor who uh, replaced his furnace. The platens are actually uh, corroded, so it's not worth repairing. Uh, but I figured that it would be kind of nice to tear it apart and show you how things work. Because uh, I think it's kind of interesting. I won't go from there. Well, the first thing is we need to gain access to it. And the best part is that ah, these are not made to uh, come off quite easily. But... There's your first look at the inside. And Isis is being healthy. Hey, sweetie. So, just a quick rundown of what some of the things are. Uh, we have the gas inlet line here, which comes over to the gas regulator. Um, I'll talk more about this later. This is a combustion blower because the combustion chamber, which is up here, is fully sealed. There's an air intake here and the exhaust here. At least I think it's that way. It's one way or the other. I, I don't really know. I haven't plugged it in and turned it on because why? Uh, this is actually a pressure switch uh, that lets the, uh, lets the system know that the pressure is actually equalized enough in the combustion chamber to make sure for safe operation because it's because it's a high efficiency furnace uh, it has a very specific range of uh, air pressure to uh, natural gas and we can talk about that a little bit later first thing I'm going to do is take off this bottom part oh other thing I should probably show you is the inside of the door has the wiring diagram this comes in very handy when you're working on these. <laughs> Here we have a nice control board. I'm uh, not sure which this one is, but it's got all of the uh, connections to it for the uh, furnace control. This is what goes up to your uh, thermostat. It's got a tamper switch in here so that when this door is open, the furnace will not run. All the connections down here. Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll find out more as we go. There's the uh, connections to the uh, that go to the thermostat and the, all the heating system controls. Oh, I'll get more into this later. Dogs are being very healthy. Okay, it's a little difficult to see, but this is the uh, combustion chamber for the furnace. Um, try to get a flashlight in there so that you can see. That is one of the one of the burners. There are three in total. Uh, this um, black line right here. This is the gas line that. Thank you, Piper. This is the gas line that comes in. Uh, there are nozzles in there that are coming off the gas line that have uh, very specific orifice sizes. Yes, you're very healthy. Uh, and that is uh, how the air is heated. Now the air is forced through these tubes. Uh, this is called the platen. And goes down and the air is forced from underneath by a fan, rises up, shrouded by these so that all of the air comes through in between these pieces. The idea is that it heats the air safely. Now, the big problem, this furnace actually, the platen has corroded because one of the problems with high efficiency gas furnaces 
is that with a little bit of incomplete combustion, uh, some of the combustion byproducts are acidic and it eats away at the metal. And after a time, it will develop holes and then you'll end up with combustion gases going into your uh, whole house flue and you end up with carbon monoxide and things like that, which is bad. So that's a good thing to check if your furnace is fairly old. This one uh, was updated in 1999 and was recently serviced about two years ago to replace the uh, combustion blower. So I've run into a little issue. I'm trying to remove the combustion chamber entirely and there are two screws that are behind the intake manifold. It looks like the intake manifold comes off. It's a piece of plastic that sits over it and then I can get to those two screws but I can't figure out how to get the intake manifold off yet. This plastic piece right here is the intake manifold and the screws are on this piece of metal right behind it. Where are we? Up here? No. Where? Where did we go? So, uh, trying to... There we are. So you see I've already removed one... Oh no, I didn't remove that one. I see. Okay. There's one there, but then there's two that are directly behind this piece. And I don't know how to get that off yet. Well, we'll find out. So this is the combustion unit. Uh, the gas normally flows in through this pipe and uh, this actually does all the controlling of it and then it comes out here. These are the burners that I was talking about. See those little orifices in there? Those are very very specifically sized for a natural gas furnace. Uh, if it was going to be a propane furnace they would be a different size. And then that goes into the burner chambers there and the burner chambers lead into the platen. So I was finally able to get the, the burner containment vessel off. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Piper. Piper, hush, it's okay. It's okay. So there's a couple of things I wanted to show you back here. Number one, this is the igniter. This is a uh, ceramic material that's conductive and it gets red hot when you pass electricity through it. And that's what actually ignites the gas in these burners. This is a flame sensor, and what they do, what's done with this is this is, uh, Piper, hush. This is the flame sensor, and it detects when there's a uh, flame in the actual combustion chamber here. What it does is there's a very high voltage on here, and um, they measure the current between this high voltage and the grounding of the combustion chamber. When there's no flame, there's very, very little current. It's basically nothing. But when there's a flame, it ionizes the air, or it ionizes the combustion gas, and it actually draws current. And they can, actually, they can t tell from the amount of current. It's not very much, but they can tell from that amount of current that there's an active flame in the combustion sensor. It's really neat technology. Taking a little walkies break. The girls were getting very antsy and wanting to go do things. And uh, Piper is being a total nutball right now. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. Sissy, come on. We're going this way. Here's the uh, spectacular front yard in the daytime. A little graveyard garden. And now that all the, the peppers are gone, it's a little more... Uh, a little more exposed. <laughs> this still looks pretty cool at night. Come on, let's go. Let's go walkies. Oh, the dogs. They love going for walks. Actually, they love going for runs and exploring things and sniffing stuff. So, we're probably going to do that a little bit later. Go to the dog park. 
but this time we're just going to walk a little bit. It is actually a pretty nice day. I mean, all things considered, it's a little cold and a little damp, but the weather, the temperature's nice. We're uh, probably in the low 50s. <laughs> Dog sniffing, sniffing stuff. Gotta sniff stuff, gotta go. So I'm trying to, uh, decided, I decided to take the furnace apart today because I want to get rid of it. Um, it's taking up space in the yard and I want to have it out for scrap before the, uh, before the snow flies. Yeah. Um, Piper is pulling. Oh my goodness. And um, hopefully I'll get it done today. Uh, it shouldn't take that much longer. I mean, it's... It's a lot of screw removal and uh, pulling wiring and things like that, so... I, I find it kind of interesting. It, there's a lot of really neat technology inside one of those furnaces, and it's a lot of it's designed to help keep you safe and keep you uh, from burning the house down. So, figuring out how to uh, how all of it works, it's all... It's made up of simple pieces and it's how they're interconnected that gets complicated. Let me try and show that. Okay, I guess we're going to go this way. You know, having 150 pounds of dog uh, decide that they want to go in a specific direction makes it difficult for me to, uh, to say no. And I often do say no, but we sh sometimes it's just better to let them walk. Okay, Piper is trying to pull me to the dog park, and we're not going to go to the dog park right now, because I still have a whole bunch of equipment set up outside that I would rather not have hanging out outside while we spend time at the dog park. Ooh, and my phone is going to die soon. Lovely. Alright, well, I'm going to stop. I'll uh, talk to you later as we get more uh, closer to the closer to the end of what's going on. I do have the other camera set up uh, to do some shooting, so I'll probably just continue with that one. Talk to you later. Okay, I'm gonna move on down to the bottom side here. This is the uh, control box that handles it. It's basically the brain of the furnace. There's the, um, it has all the igniter circuitry and all the timing circuitry and all the sensing circuitry to make sure that everything is safe. Uh, we'll get into more detail on this later, but let's get this out of here. Yeah. Here's one of those um, heat sensors that I was talking about. It's a pretty simple thing. It's uh, in the focus. You know, all it does is when it gets too hot, it opens a circuit. And they're usually listed, there's a temperature listed on them, and I haven't looked at this one yet, but it's, you know, I don't know, looks like maybe 220 degrees. It's hard to tell. So you can see how corroded these are. They basically just rotted away. 
all the material on here. This is just um, this is the surface metal that's been eaten away by the acids and the combustion gases. This is why this uh, furnace was discarded, by the way, because um, there it has actually gone through inside the platens. This is kind of an interesting burner prof or a heat exchanger profile because when the air comes in here, this is wider, and as it gets over here, it gets a little, it gets thinner, and down in here, it starts to restrict the airflow. Oh, look, there's, I don't know if you can see it, there's a crack right there. That's one place where it's gone bad. Uh, a couple more in here. As it comes out, it's much narrower and I believe operating going much faster. That would be my guess. It might be a little difficult to see, but most of the corrosion has happened right up in this area. And this is where probably the most leakage has been occurring from this. So, I mean, this is toast, but this unit right here, just this basic piece, is about $1,300. To, uh, to purchase and you know at that point with labor involved it's just it's ridiculous this is why at this point it's getting a new furnace was the option so that is now an empty furnace body everything's been taken out some of it's there some of it's there uh, a few other pieces I've got up on the porch that uh, I'm finding to keep for other things.